and also the bigger but the bigger picture too like mike's saying if we have no if if we're if we're losing all of our cultural common beliefs and if now we have no faith in the institution who do we trust then no then there's no social cohesion at all after a right. while like, that's the problem what they want yeah that's that's the issue so, so, like, that, all right, so, so oh, that brings us to french cinema in the mm-hmm. 50s I sent everyone on the show a link to a Wikipedia article on uh, Cajés de Cinema, which is a, um, and I know I'm mispronouncing it, so please, <laughs> if you guys know the French pronunciation, that would be right great. At all. Hopefully our listener is French speaking. <laughs> yes. So it's basically, it translates into notebooks on cinema. And this is a uh, magazine that came out I believe in the early fifties, um, in, in France. And it was basically one of the first critical, uh, uh, magazines that, that they would have articles about, uh, movies, about cinema, like not just judging them like, oh, did the audience like it? Was this exciting? But like, as an art form, like judging it, judging films as, as an art film on, uh, merits of, cinema in other words like showing not telling use of um blocking use of light use of perspective use of sound use of you know again looking at cinema as an artistic expression and kind of like it's fangoria kind of like fangoria <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> a little more highbrow a little more highbrow um and and a lot of you know the french it really it was it was the playground of like the French new wave in the fifties and sixties. It's, it's where all, you know, um, Truffaut, all these guys got talked about and talked like, so there were there French directors who were written about in this magazine also wrote for the magazine. So yeah, it was, before, before they were making films, it sounded before like before they were even making films. Yeah. They so, were like critics. They were like critics. And, um, so I'm kind of using that as a jumping off point, just again, looking at what I'd like to look at in this episode, just to to make it as concise as I can, is cinema and visual storytelling as... Cahiers du cinéma, French. There, what was that? Say it again. Cahiers du cinéma, French. Cahiers du cinéma. I can't look... believe you didn't know that, Michael. I'm sorry. This is your show. We're, this isn't about like uh, I like this movie or this or that. This is looking at it as a as again as an art form, as a storytelling mechanism, as uh, you know, not just like individual movies. Um, and where where I kind of went with it, the, the video I sent again, I don't, and I we can post that in the comments. It's not really an episode about that video, but it's something that um as someone personally and we can we can go around i, I don't know what your guys experience is uh with with cinema with films um, i'm a big cinemaphile i you love know it. it's it's something that in my entire life my my father was a uh still photographer for the u.s army over in um you know vietnam and thailand i mean he was in the signal corps my sister uh heavy into photography i never studied it uh officially but i've always i consider myself a decent photographer um you know i i was more into motion picture i've shot 16 i've shot eight millimeter i've shot video i studied it in college it's something that as a as a hobby i'm i've always been interested in my entire life just visual storytelling i've programmed uh film festivals i'm a I, i'm a projectionist i've projected 
movies in every format, including IMAX for festivals, for 3,000 people outside, for, you know, I, wow. I just love it. I love it. Um, and and I've noticed over the years, and 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 one of the re reasons I want to talk about this with you guys is, and Zeus and I have talked about this, I'm not a huge Marvel Universe fan. I do like some of it. But in, in the film world, the Marvel Universe movies have been a real um, kind of kind of a, a, a point of contention, right? I mean, you've mm. got these directors like Scorsese and, and Coppola that are like kind of downing the, the Marvel stuff, but they're, they're the movies that are bringing people into the theaters. Um, we've, we've been dealing with reality television coming out in the nineties, uh, virtual reality, you know, um, like the Oculus where people are kind of like in their own, their own world, world. with it, uh, artificial intelligence, social media um what is realism you know we we i look back at like saving private ryan and everyone's like man that opening scene and save it mm -hmm. Pri saving private ryan it was like you were storming the beaches of normandy it was so real it's like okay um documentary style mm -hmm. first person shooter video games um again all of all of these things that have developed through technology as a way as a visual way of communicating and like where is it going if you look back at early cinema when it first came out a very famous and i can't remember the i think it was a lumiere brothers film of a train pulling into a station and people in the audience there's stories where that oh, people yeah. in the audience like were freaked out and scared they thought there was a train coming at them because they had mm. never seen anything like that before you know i know a guy who he's long gone um but he told me when he was a kid and this was probably in the 30s uh he would he would see westerns and stuff in the theater and he he used to think they kept the horses behind the screen <laughs> like you know he you know it's like again it was like it it was so real to him like and the now, illusion like the illusion and now you look at you know, over the last 20 years, you you see CGI, you know, computer graphics illustration. Is that what it is that what it is? is I think it's computer generated image. Computer generated images. People are like, oh, that just looks like CGI or like, oh, that looks really real. You know, it's like it, it's almost like films and video is judged on how how real it is. So it's sort of like. Mm -hmm. Where is all this going? And in that video I sent you guys, what he kind of gets into is, and what what Notebooks on Cinema got into, and has been written about, you know, in documentary filmmaking for decades, is as soon as you introduce the camera into the room, it alters what you're yeah. recording, just the mere presence of it. So, yeah, there's a there's a there's a scientific study that they did where like. They send these two particles down in a straight line, and when they're not being observed, they part mm -hmm. and go through these different. There's, I found that video fascinating. I'm gonna go in a whole different way than and yours. That's fine. Maybe, but... Yeah, no, that's great. I, to me, well, well, it's well. What was your? Yeah. You're about to make a point though, Mike. You're you're yeah, seem like no, you. Yeah, where I'm going with it is, um, to me as a as a fan of what I new as 20th century cinema i feel like we're kind of i feel like it's kind of like it's in this weird spot like i don't know where it's going is it an art form is it just a business is it you know i look at like kids using these oculus things now like where are we going like is it a quest to replicate reality is it a mm. is it a quest to mimic reality or are we is has the storytelling element been completely stripped out of it at this point? You know, it, I, I don't know. Like, to me, I feel like we're, we're at the Wild West, like, all over again. I mean, again, back in the, when cinema first started in, in the, in the, in really in the early 20th century, into the teens, it was silent. 
most films were like seven minutes long because that's what a reel was. Um, that's why a lot of people don't know this, but a, a lot of the R Gang shorts and the, the um, Three Stooges and Laurel and Hardy, a lot of them are like seven minutes, six, seven, eight minutes, because that's what that's what one real film was like they, they got it that's what would run you know through the projector at that time but they got into sound they got into color they got into cinemascope they got And into they didn't actually necessarily get into sound right away. no They no had, I'm saying there was but times it, the... where they had like a guy with a piano behind I, at the the beginning at the beginning yeah. but but these have been considered improvements these have been considered pushing the technology forward Right. and and you, again to imax people are like oh man i'm gonna go see the new star wars film but i gotta see it in imax or i got like where are we going with this like at, at what point i mean when musk talks about the Neuralink, are we really just pining for this experience of being able to dive into like the matrix or are we interested in the storytelling i don't even know So Like, here, here, is cin in other words, is the art of cinema just a stepping stone on this human path to where we are just navel gazing, or, or what? I, I don't yeah, know. It's just fascinating to me. Okay, well, if I the can put my, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jack. no, go ahead, Zeus. It's all right. If I can put my spin on it, I'm going deep into like the sci-fi, fucking post-apocalyptic matrix kind of vibe, and I felt like they were saying that like. media at, at all aspects from the very beginning was like a coddling force that that kept us distracted and and we would go in in mass to see it and i felt like it was like when film started cinema started that that was like the first matrixy moment like like Yeah. mass like psychological uh Experience. distraction And like now we're actually getting into where it's going to get real. Like if you want to go into that whole, are we part of a simulation? That's what I was getting out of the video is like, I felt like, cause, cause why would you talk about movies and then talk about like particle theory? You, you know what I mean? It, it almost felt like a warning of things to come. Like I was talking to Mike and it's like, it, of course, Neuralink is going to be the next, the next level after they go into porn for like 15 minutes. Cause every great invention Every great goes thing through. comes out in porn first. Comes out Yeah. in porn first, yeah. That's the true test. At least Um, for a minute. yeah, just for a minute, you know, somebody's got a Neuralink, they're going to go walk down the street and watch two people banging. And then and then we'll get to the real shit. But it, it, I, I got like a weird, like matrixy vibe off of that video. I don't know if you guys, if, if I'm sounding bonkers with this, then please let me know. But I felt like it was kind of saying that cinema... is a distraction it, it's a way to cultivate people it's a way to to get us to pay attention to what's on the screen and not pay attention to what's to our side It, it's a quest it's a quest to replicate reality that can never really be reality and 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 my truly now this is going off into psychopathy but what i was thinking was interesting and i i'm gonna argue the marvel universe thing now granted tarantino did have like a, a universe of sorts with his with his films like you'd have you know vincent vega was related to the guy that was in reservoir dogs the other vega guy i think it was michael madsen's character so there he had this kind of universe thing going on little connections between his movies my argument is that i think that a lot of these directors although they are fantastic are a little jealous because marvel started the universe thing with movies like Now you got like the Walking Dead universe. You got the the uh, House of Dragons is is in the universe of Game of Thrones. Like you've got all these different cinematic, be they series or or uh, movies, where they're building their universes because they know that we dig that. We want to see the connection that was in that other show. Like um, it, Fear the Walking Dead. It's in the Walking Dead universe, but it's mostly different characters, but it's a different perspective on what they're dealing with. And now there's like, uh, what's his, uh, the guy that was in uh, Boondock Saints, that the the scruffy, 
rugged guy on Walking Dead. Daryl. Yeah. Is it not, it's not Nathan Fillion. It's um. Isn't it Remus? Daryl Dixon. What? Isn't it something Remus the actor? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, Redis, something Redis. But like he's got his own show, but now he's in France, doing it in France, killing Walking Dead. So like they're building all these universes. So I actually. And I do love a lot of the Marvel movies. There's some real shit, shitty ones, but but overall, hmm. they've really done a really great job of crafting a universe and connecting movies. And you watch one, and there's a character from the other one, and you're like, oh yeah, Daredevil's in this, blah blah blah. Um, I didn't get so that I give them a lot all. of credit. Mm-hmm. Now, I, what I got from it was. What's I that? thought they were trying to project where are we going with movies, and Mike was talking about. Okay, the next generation is going to be VR, mm-hmm. watching movies through VR or making the movie to go with VR. Yeah, you yeah. Can, they already have. Weird. They already kind of have that. It's not they're not movies, but they're like, um, YouTube. There is one that's uh, there's like a I think a hot air balloon ride one, and then like a roller coaster. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if a whole Imagine movie like that might make it's like that but... original train coming at you in the theater from mm-hmm. the early yeah, 1900s I mean, with, at that the, time yeah with, when that when that I'm Lumiere sorry. film came with the train coming to station that was it scared people like it, again this is all yeah. relevant and now, I'm, i guess what i'm saying is it's like cinema i've always viewed it as viewed it as an art form like the novel like live yeah, i think of cinema theater, as literature like literature whatever but i think it's for the for a lot of people i think it's a whole other thing on top of that mm. you know it's this quest to are Total we as s- human beings trying to replicate mm-hmm. a, a reality sure. and can that even can that even be done and in that video i think he was making a strong argument that you it can't like in other words we're we're on this right. never fully quest for something that can never fully be realized but as technology improves we're getting we're getting better and better at it but what is it it's it's beyond storytelling like is this about storytelling or not like what are we trying to do it's probably more about storytelling because okay think about some really older when cgi first kind of came around right and you watched a a movie with cgi and it was so corny so cheesy dick with the image and you're just like well, right, but I mean, like that's that's what we're talking about by today's mm-hmm. standard versus where we're going in the future, where we've been. Right. So, like, I mean, it's gotten a lot better, but you don't want to watch a movie that has those CGI images that are you can just okay. This is, I mean, like you know, the movie isn't real. You know that it's a movie. It takes you However, out. However, it. it just doesn't. It de- It looks weird. I like, think I, I think a big argument for it is. As long as we're aware, if we can go into a movie and be not aware that we're in a movie, like we're mm-hmm. so deeply involved in it that it it feel like we we disassociate completely, and that's where the Neuralink. That's I think Neuralink movie. is going to be the next well, big. Well, wait a minute, but back to that point though, like Mike's saying, what's the place of twentieth century cinema now? Like Desiree's talking about. Now in 2024, having seen the amazing CGI that money can buy today, if you go back and you look at something like Jurassic Park in the 90s, it looks dated. It's like going back and looking at a Ray Harryhausen old, (laughs) like Jason and the Argonauts, where they would use claymation to replicate the dinosaur or the so that was amazing at the and time. like we like when we were kids we had that in clash of the titans that 80s yeah. movie where oh, they, man. They, they did that or like and, what if, what if uh, king kong was a puppet well right mm-hmm. if you look I at mean, the old you... king kong he's also like that claymation sort of oh. stop motion right that's how they make him climb up yeah and but now you airplane. see a King Kong movie and you can see the hair on his yeah. face. Well, that's... because it's right because of CGI and 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 I guess Mike, how I would answer that is if the quest was always to advance technologically to make things more real, that in itself is a technical art form, but it's still up to the director, the filmmaker, to tell a story using those tools. And that's why you still have really good filmmakers and really shitty filmmakers. Like Marvel's got the budget 
that you wouldn't i mean they could make the they can utilize the best technology that there is but if the director in charge of it is you know way above his skis and doesn't know really how to direct a good story you're going to get yeah. something like the shit Zeus is talking about that that Marvel puts out every now and then where it's like wow you had all the tools to make magic but Not you happening. made a shitty you made a shitty movie but and, I, end, and, yeah. and 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 I'd rather go back I'd rather go back and watch Clash of the Titans and I don't care about right. the suspension of disbelief it's Bingo. okay yeah I I'd rather watch a good movie but you then know? Then you get a really great movie <clears throat> that's mostly practical effects. So Jack and I were actually talking about it today. There's a movie that just came out called uh, Late Night with the Devil. If you haven't seen it, it's not fan-freaking-tastic, no, it, but it's a not great concept. It's yeah, well-acted. It's well-acted. Yep. But the thing it does is it captures you in this moment in time, like 70s, 70s 80s, around there, right, Jack? 70s. And it's about a late night talk show and they do a, an exorcism. And it's like the practical effects were probably one of the best things about it. The cinematography, you thought you were watching an old Johnny Carson kind of show. And yeah. the acting, like I said, was very good. They just, you said it best. They didn't stick the landing. It could have no. been epic, but the ending kind of sucked. Yeah. It was it's... very predictable, but the, it was, a it was, I enjoyed it a great deal. Right. They well, it's one of those. It's 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 a found footage movie, and they did a good mm -hmm. job at making you feel like you were on the set of the making the of 70s. a TV show of gotcha. a seventies TV show. But yeah, I mean, it's really good. I mean, I I recommend it. I'm just gonna say you're gonna be disappointed in parts, but you're also gonna be fucking amazed at other parts. Yeah. Well, well like what Jack was saying with the, like the suspension of disbelief. Like I feel that we've kind of lost that. In other words. In the last like 20 years or so in movies, and the movie industry is just taking it on the chin, there is, and I hear it, I hear it when people talk about films or like when you read like reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, like how realistic something is. Like where, in other words, I feel like the storytelling of cinema is one branch, but what people are looking for is... It, it it's a contradictory thing. They're looking for an escapism into reality, right? It's like it's it doesn't right. make any sense. It's like right. I need this thing to convince me that I am experiencing something for real that's unreal. It's like if you, you had a, a movie with a ghost, you want the ghost, but you don't want to see the wire. You don't want to see the wire. Yeah. That's that's what they're talking. They want they want it, they want it to look real. But they want it to be fantastic. Well, there's the, the whole question, and this is something I I heard this years ago, and I don't I don't know who exactly first brought this up, but you know, did we did human beings? You know, human beings have always dreamed. You know, before the industrial revolution, you know, during the Civil War, back thousand years ago, ten thousand years ago, human beings dreamed. Did we dream in slow motion before the advent of slow motion in cinema? And before it became a technical tech See, that's where it gets all matrixy for me. <laughs> thing or you know, in other words, like what what came first? And are we trying to I don't think I've to... ever dreamed in slow motion. Have you done that? I have, yeah. Hundred huh? percent. I don't recall that. Yeah. No, I mean I have, but I'm just saying. In other words, is a is it a technical thing that came about and then people thought, you know dreamed that. about it or did it again? Have you guys ever had dreams <laughs> you where dream things you were the zoom? six million dollar man? I said. Well, have you ever had a dream where something <laughs> zooms in or that a tracking shot or in other words, did people <laughs> did did cinema come out of that or is that a result of the technology mm -hmm. coming first? And then people started dreaming about it. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's a movie back way, way back on one of our, you know, what did we get? Like 10,000 people watching it, like our favorite movies. Um, and there's a movie from the 90s until the end of the world is by uh, Vim Vanders, German director. And there's a lot in the movie. I mean, the director's cut's like five hours long. But uh, 
there there's a they basically create this technology that you can record your dreams and then play them uh when you're kind awake of like um what was it called strange days uh, similar what, to what's strange the movie with days. natalie wood um oh yeah brainstorm was it brainstorm i think it was brainstorm yeah probably. it was it Jack, Mike and I were actually talking about a great movie that kind of fits into this whole thing that we're talking about. Um, does anybody, was it called End of Days or Strange Days? Strange Days. With, yeah, the uh, yeah with Ray Fiennes. Where you, yeah. yeah, you would record like, experiences. Like that's where I th see things going. Not Obviously not the rapey killy part, but... <laughs> but, well, um, but I feel like if they get us to put something in our head that attaches to our brain yeah. and can affect our senses dreams that's what early. i'm saying is is if they can if if these technologies can convince us again it's all about perspective if we go in if we go into this and it blocks out whatever tells us that it's not real and we start seeing these things and smelling things and tactile responses yes Continue. I'm just raising my hand so I remember about my question. Oh, um, I feel like, I mean, what a great fucking mind control whammy that'll be. And we're not far from Neuralink being a, before we die, I mean, we're what, in our 20s? Um, we're going to be, we're going to be seeing this stuff where, and it may, we may only see the beginning. We may not see what's far into the future and what they can do, but if they get us mounting something in our brain, and it has an effect on our brain and it controls some of our senses. It's a natural paradigm shift into something that could be far more sinister or far more helpful. You know what I mean? If it's helping us speak every language so we can actually talk to people and they're protesting and we can hear their thoughts and hear what they're saying and realize that they're full of shit. Like <laughs> it's a, it's a big, it's a spicy meatball to bite into. Go yeah, ahead. Jeff. Jeff. Yes. Okay. Have you seen, um, this i don't know how new it is or if you've even seen but so they're like virtual restaurant experiences if you do you know what i'm mm. talking about no uh, i think so so when we were um in the dominican republic they had this at the resort they had this restaurant where you could go and it was like basically you i don't we didn't go because we wasn't trying to pay the 150 dollars to go but um they like played scenes on the this like 360 theater that incorporated the table like the wow. table was even like a screen okay. and basically i don't know if it was like a travel through like each course was like a different world or what but basically what you were seeing was supposed to influence like the food that you're eating like the taste of the food that you're eating and mm. so all like i think uh, awaken your senses i think is what it was mm. called Okay. And so the point of it, like I said, it was supposed to, I think they released like some, maybe some smells in the room. I don't know, but it's supposed to <laughs> just in, you, use one sense through video to enhance your taste sense. I don't know. It that's seems exactly really what we're talking about. Yeah, that, that sounds that's fantastic. Neat. Yeah, I mean, are are we compelled? In other words, it, look, is this, is it a gimmick? Is it something that people are using to sell? Or are we as people compelled and seeking this sort of realistic alternate uh alternate perception i guess i mean well i, I don't know if i need to go to that restaurant <laughs> i i got gotcha. you it's like a one that would be like a one and you know i experienced it once there's only so many people in the world that you could you know i don't know but what i do need is to when i buy a movie ticket is to not see a cheese dick movie yeah yeah you want so, you want i mean, I mean Part of a good movie is you kind of, don't you want to be kind of taken out yeah. of reality, yeah, or out That's of your reality for well, isn't that ninety the whole, minutes? Well, are, well, if you're gonna go and you're gonna not even be watching the movie. Why are you going? Why are you watching the movie? Yeah, I mean, you want so, to I mean, be taken you away. You are supposed to be. I mean, unless it's a really stupid. So, did y'all ever go see Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah, love it. Okay, I walked out of the theater. Oh I man. No, I was bored. You know, by it looking too. back, <laughs> looking back, it was a good movie. I should, but it was so stupid at the time. And so, yeah, if it was, it's that dumb. Yeah. Then it, I guess you're not being taken out of. It it didn't hold you, and there's well, different yeah, genres. Well, yeah, I have like textbook ADHD, so you need to hold my attention. 
or I'm leaving. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. And also get on the no, phone. De- <laughs> and also just to sort of back up what Des was saying about like not wanting to see something cheesy looking or whatever, Mike. I mean, you are going for escapism, right? Like if I go see Jurassic Park, whatever, part 10 with Chris Pratt, I know that it's fake, right? I'm going in there knowing it's fantasy, but I want to escape reality. And if you're going to make me convinced that the dinosaurs are really putting the people in peril, then the dinosaurs, it helps to have them look really real. Mm-hmm. Like t- like Tom said, I don't want to see the string above the ghost, right? Like, I, I don't want to see, you know, because then it's like, ah, uh, you know, yeah. like in a horror movie, you want the the kills to look real. Like if you're watching a gory movie, I want you know, to see the blood. You want to cringe, you know, you want to be like, ah, shit, you know, that that you know, didn't look like a rubber hand. It looked like her hand really got stabbed with the corkscrew or whatever. Um, so there is something to the technological advancements, but you also don't want it to get like, like when you go to Disney world and you go into like the star Wars simulator and they sit you in the chair, like you're on a spaceship and they just show show a projection. And just the fact that the camera's doing this and your seats moving a little bit and they're pumping some kind of, you know, compressed air, you feel like you're flying through space and that's all well and good for the simulator, the flight simulator, whatever it is. You don't want to go see that for like drama. I mean, you just want the thrill, like oh, the thrill. Good you know point. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's you don't want to see. You're not. You're not looking for auteur cinema. You're. You just want to feel like you flew through in a in a in an X-wing fighter. You know, it's a for, trick. It's a trick. It's a, it's trick. a carnival trick. Yeah. Right. But imagine. So I think. I think there's value in a... that if that's what you want to do at that moment. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if you're at the, if you're at the boardwalk and you want to feel like you know what I mean. That's essentially what Disney World is. You, it's a little. It's just but, thrills but, and. But isn't it interesting that like again technology advances like uh, porn, war, and perception, right? So it's like uh, technology advances, and we one of the leading edges of it in addition to porn and war and killing people is like ways to alter uh, our own perception. And I'm I'm just saying, I feel, and I don't know where I'm going with it, but I just, I feel like as human beings, we're compelled to, to push that envelope further and further and further and further as much as we possibly can. And I, again, I look at something like the Neuralink and I I can't even fully explain that. Mike, have you, go ahead. But is that no, where it's I was going? Gonna, yeah, no, Mike, and to that point, that's what I thought was really interesting about this little documentary. When they did the, the I I drew it out here. They When they did like the Venn diagram or whatever yeah. you call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, circles. simulation. And okay, cinema. so in between, in between simulation and imagination was the segment on imaginary models of the world as it could be. And when that guy did that little spiel about inequality and equality, and they showed the 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 poor woman struggling to get all the money, and there's there's yeah. diversity and there's equity, and we got to have more equity. Like when he threw that little leftist bullshit into this documentary, I, I said, well. I said, holy shit! If it's- they can utilize simulation to get us more into an ideal world, then you're talking about Huxley. Yeah. You're talking about Brave New World. Yeah. I mean, you're, talking, you're talking Matrix and we're all batteries. Especially yes. if we're seeking it. Right? Yes. In other words, if there's if we are compelled to seek this and then the people providing it are putting their own rotation on it, I, I, again, it's it, people. I just feel like people need to have their eyeballs open. I mean, I, I'm yeah. fascinated with human behavior. I mean, back when I was in high school, and I always think back to this in biology class. I did this whole report on intoxication amongst uh, an, like animals, like the natural world, because you know I'm always like been catnip? fascinated, when like cat, cat, like cat, like catnip, okay. um, hmm. where you know. We are, we're human beings, but we're, we're animals and we seek to alter our perception uh, through intoxicants, you know, various drugs found in the world, natural, unnatural, whatever. We're smart 
and we're 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 clever so we come up with artificial ways of doing that but i researched it and not it's been a long time so i won't get into this into the specifics but there are many animal species who seek out intoxicants in nature like and there's no there's no um evolutionary reason for it right i mean these are like not i'm not talking about primates i'm talking about like lower My level cats mammals eat the cat mint plant. cats you know whatever that seek out mind-altering substances in other words they're compelled to do that and as a as an animal if we are compelled to seek out this kind of dimensional right. shift of our perception there's going to be people there that are willing to provide it. Mm -hmm. But even when we get into now, like, you, look at, like, you look at like Gemini, like the Google AI and like that ridiculous thing that, that they had happen a few months ago where people are like, yeah, show which we me can talk about another show. Yes, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying it, it, when you start, when you have people compelled to go in a certain direction and the people who are providing that direction can kind of manipulate what it is that's a that's a powerful uh paradigm shift big time okay yeah this is a moment of truth in a safe space okay. have you ever has anyone here ever watched vr porn no i have not I, no, i've never I, done I've, vr at all no, like no I've, I, I've i've seen it <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you have? Yeah, come on, let's go. Okay, no, no I've listen. Seen it. No, this is a serious. So you have seen it? I yeah. guess not yeah, watched a lot, but have seen get, it. Like the glasses, and basically, you, it's like a double screen video, but with the glasses on, sort of. No, That's I weird. didn't. I didn't do any glasses. I I knew somebody who showed it to me on their phone, and I was like, okay, I see it. The girl's riding. Okay, and it looks like she's on top of you. It looks like the penis is yours. But have you but ever? Then, but then, but then he turned the phone, and it was like you looked around right, right. the room. So and, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's, I mean, I guess yeah, you feel the like the VR it's, aspect you know. of it. So, but you didn't do it with the VR goggles on. No, no. I just Tom, you didn't the do phone. it with the VR goggles on. Yeah, with the, well. Okay. Well, whatever. There were some other. He's, he's got a library. Version of Oculus. <laughs> okay. Not the Oculus. So, well, it probably doesn't matter what it is. More was, like but the VR. Okay. What about it? So, <laughs> this, this, oh, however, <laughs> they will be able to, rec to create this, whatever camera has done this. That oh my goodness it it was an experience that I it kind of did like jar you a little bit because and I don't know how Tom had the same experience because it basically what it felt like watching the goggles is that you like if you it, all you could see was like from here down like like you were laying in the bed and some chicks riding you whatever right, right. so it's like your head was on the it was like a complete and total one hundred percent point of view from where you are with the goggles on and it was so like and it was three-dimensional yeah, it was so turned, very yeah. real you could see like dirty socks on the floor you could see the curtains all yeah. fucked up like it was so crazy i had to like take like i i couldn't do it anymore i was like this is too this <laughs> I, is this is weird here, here's well, an you, interesting because you would have been in the you would have the man's head. Well, I mean, it was. It doesn't matter. Like it's, it's still like. But you even don't if see I was the chick on top. It's, it's POV, so you're not seeing your head. Right, 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 okay, right. I got you. But she's in the man's POV, probably. Yeah. That's so I was a dude. Ninety percent of it. Yeah, she was a dude, thing, man. They add a few different tactile things, like a helmet that gives you a like they're touching, they're rubbing your hair, yeah. or something that might be inserted in you, or you insert into. It's like ready like, you're yeah, suddenly, like masturbation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're, you're suddenly into a whole different thing. And but I thinking about this a lot, um, since I watched video, you know what's interesting is we all thought like holograms were gonna be like the the next big thing, and so not the case. Like the holograms that we're gonna be using are VR or Neuralink. I think Neuralink Tupac, is I mean, he's still at, uh, uh hologram, hologram, whatever. Yeah, he's still a hologram. That's the only one we got. Tupac. What's that? Tupac. Tupac. He's, he's been it's doing Oh yeah, but, but, but you follow what I'm saying it, it didn't have this yeah. devastating effect, this this like massive effect on like uh media or cinema. We didn't go, we're not going to hologram movies. Uh, we're gonna skip right over that. 
Garen fucking teed. We're going to go right to VR movies that are so like, you know, it's going to, I feel like it's a paradigm shift. We're going to go from VR. That's going to be a big thing for a while, kind of like DVD to Blu-ray. And then we're going to go straight to streaming, which is right in your head. Mm. And instead of, instead of watching Star Wars, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, you flying Red be 5 and, and driving into the... But that's that's the problem, though, is like if if we already have if we I know we cover it, but if we already have a media that's doing everything it can to shift perception yeah. and if and if the people in power that we always worry about, the government, the tech companies, the corporate media, if these are the bodies with the money and the tech and, and the technical expertise that are putting this stuff out with their worldview in mind. And now we're going to have robo porn and we're going to have and now weed is legalized everywhere. So we're, you can just stay home, get stoned, be broke yeah. and and bang and whatever beautiful and bang whatever beautiful woman you want. And then and then suddenly watch movies like you've never done before, where you're literally immersed at your yeah, like Park. like you could be Luke Skywalker holding the so, yeah. the lightsaber. But, but Jack, so Jack, just uh, just to, to to continue your point. So is that uh, is that good? No. Well, I, I'm just saying, way. but it seems like we think it is. No. But, not well, many, I mean, if we're anymore. satiated, if we're happy, if we're not going through the real world shit that we're going through it yeah it's called distracted sure or perhaps this is maybe this is and rogan talks about it all the time that ai is going to fucking change the world and soon and i kind of am believing i'm he gets a little wacky when he gets into his his own personal conspiracies but he's a smart guy and he says a a lot of things that kind of make sense you know Mm -hmm. Um, is this... Yeah, but if the idea is for the powerful to control the masses, there's no better way of doing it than just to get them. But if you're not feeling idiot, controlled, if, if haven't you're not we had feeling that controlled, already, Zeus? The, huh? Do you, you remember those uh, choose your own adventure books? Yeah. Did you ever read yeah. those when you were a kid? Yeah, man. Or like you the could, choose you your were own wielding the. Uh, yeah, you were wielding the sword and you were deciding what to do. Is that what you're talking about with VR? Yeah, so like done I mean, that already. I mean, yeah, we, because that hits the video game. So if you think like a VR movie is coming, like that, that's already here a with VR a VR movie? video game. Walk me. Well, they a do. VR movie. They do. Like like I said, they'll have they have um VR YouTube that um just yeah yeah I've seen those. VR. Uh, that's where you find the VR porn basically. I mean, not like a roller porn. coaster. That's not. But but, it, like, but the roller coaster and the movie? porn are totally different because I could ride the ro- a, the uh, VR roller coaster. I could do the <laughs> VR hot hot air balloon. It's cool, like you know. But that porn thing was so real. It was just I couldn't do that. And I if that's where we're going. But here's the I thing, mean we're all they, not going to walk around with a fucking VR headset on our faces all day. We're no, just we're not. not Neuralinks. No, it's but you'll stay you. home. You'll stay home and do it. Yeah. Yeah. You you here's the thing. Link into, Maybe for like uh, a couple hours, because then you just get a headache. <laughs> If, if we don't well, feel controlled and we feel that our needs are being met and satiated and we just keep these things on all the time and we're, we got, we got to a point where Neuralink has us walk over to the fridge while we're still in whatever world we're in, grab food and eat. Like just, I mean, it's not an unbelievable concept at this point in time. Oh, that, that's like the, that's like the matrix. They'll, they'll keep your body going. They'll keep your body going for what they get out of it and keep you, you know, but, otherwise they yeah, would just kill we could you. Be, we could be fucking sewing, sh- you know, we could be fucking building machines totally in this world. One part of our brain is doing that shit while the other part is just fucking seeing us dodging bullets. You know what I mean? But, yeah. it's, but it's also like, like Desiree was saying with like the, you know, the sock on the floor or whatever, it gets back to what, it, I mean, we are kind of playing fast and loose with what the definition of reality is i mean desiree was like and you look left and look right and there's a sock on the floor like it's It's really realistic no my my point is it's like if you have technology that gets so good that it gets to the point that people are like this is real Mm -hmm. you have taken off all i'm saying you have taken off all the guardrails um 
you've entered a very scary place. You're you're talking about being able to hardline into someone's brain and literally create reality for them. Yeah, so until you go to, to itch your face and of. like that train. Yeah, it's the train coming at you. I get, but until you go to itch your face and there's a fucking VR headset on it, like oh okay, yeah. I, I like, got you. Even with I, the Neuralink, you can't. What is it going to project images out in front of you? I, I I don't know. But what I'm saying is, it's all a continuum, right? I mean, it's all like whatever it is, it's always going to get better. It's going to. Mm-hmm improve so even if to your point does if you're like well you can always feel there's a head but maybe there's not going to be one day you know i don't know it, it's sort of like to me it's i feel like as as a human animal as a as people we're compelled to do this and at the end of the day it's it's incredibly self-destructive at the same yeah. time but we're the ones with our foot on the gas Thelma mm-hmm. and Louising it right to mm-hmm. the cliff. Edge. Well, that's and that's the thing with these cinema guys that you know these these filmmakers and film critics and these people that that as a cinema fan that I have respect and admiration for, they created this art form, but it's almost like it. It kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park. It's like you, you know, you focus so much on if you could, you didn't stop to think that if you should. Mm-hmm. And I was literally just thinking that. Yeah, and 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 I think his quote was the guy was is, is it I think the guy's name was Bazan, mm-hmm, you know yeah. the guy who felt cinema should embrace advancements to achieve total cinema. Yeah, total cinema. And, and so as much as and then you probably had filmmakers that were really just about the humanity of the story and let me use blocking and let me use different weird angles, you know. Like I mean, if you look at somebody like let's say in America, you have. Um, uh, Citizen Kane, uh, Orson Welles, Orson Welles, yeah. Orson Welles, and Stanley Kubrick too, mm-hmm. where they would they would take they would shoot from these angles that may have had like an artistic mode or a different way of looking at things, but like the characters on the screen, it wasn't their perspective. It was just it was just a unique perspective to convey authority or to convey smallness or or you know what have you and you it, convey it, a feeling it, to the viewer right it wasn't trying to reproduce reality you know mm-hmm. it was really a statement of, about the story and at the same time as you had guys like that you've got guys that are just trying to make everything as realistic as possible you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's the bottom line and uh it, it's it's odd because i i love movies so much and i even like the, the 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 technical advancements of it like as something like star wars we'd mm. never seen anything like that no and i respect george lucas and i and, and he's obviously behind so much of these special effects and the development i forget the name of his company that was responsible for industrial a lot of light magic. Indu- or something. industrial light and magic you got it okay right. yeah um but at the same time, I, now I look back and I'm like, George, what did you do? Like, what did you let out of the bottle here? Mm-hmm. Be- because look where it look how it can be used, you know, and we're sitting here talking about the potential. And it's uh, it, it's just sad because I love movies and I don't want to think that, oh, my God, this technology is going to lead to, you know, what we're going to experience if it keeps going like this. It, I, it's just it's I, I just. I mean, and that's a great, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. And when I watched that video and and have been thinking about this, I love cinema. I love theaters. Oh. I love seeing a movie in a theater. It, it, watching on TV, you're never going to convince me it's anywhere near that. Because it's not. It's just not. Mm-hmm. But where the technology is going, it, people aren't going to theaters anymore because it's because of vr because of uh uh, reality quote unquote television because of realism because you you would go to the cinema you would go to the theater because the screen was big and it would take all of your perception the best place Mm -hmm. to sit in a movie theater is about is about halfway back or a third of the way back from the screen but basically you want to have it so that when you look forward, you can see the entire screen in your peripheral vision 
But if something happened over on the far right or far left, you would have to avert your eye. Like you want to be mm -hmm. right. That's the that's the ideal spot to sit in a movie theater. But and that's we're getting I... to the point now we don't need that anymore because we have these glasses. We have these things. So mm -hmm. to me, it's sadly, it cinema as something that you go to a theater, uh, it is is dying. And the oh, sad yeah. part about that is there is the there is the social aspect yeah. of it yeah, that the just communal gets, experience the communal experience that just gets mm -hmm. completely lost no yeah. one even considers that anymore <laughs> and, on, and on your note about the social experience i got this great uh, i think it's a funny story about django i think i went with jason and we all know that the first like 15 minutes is inward 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 right mm -hmm. and you're like you're like uncomfortable uh, but so when I'm watching it, uh, they're like inward, inward, inward. And I look over and there's these two black guys down the aisle. And I have a look at them and I'm and like, they're starting to laugh. And I look at the one guy and he's like, it's okay. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> from that point on, we were laughing our asses off. But <laughs> it, the communal experience is still something that that's something that they're going to have to figure out how we can do that. I would you know, that. virtual, virtual mm -hmm. movie theaters, you know, where... Everybody's there, but they're not really there. Yeah, um, it's alarming. Yeah, the only the only thing that takes me out of the we're in a simulation part is I would have definitely pick, picked a better story for myself. <laughs> like, oh, I wait, have a lot oh, of challenges, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're oh you're saying if we're already in a simulation, I got you. Yeah, yeah. The, I, the I, we're I, in I, a yeah. simulation thing, which yeah. god damn if it doesn't start to make a little more sense the further no. we go along technology well, I, I i think the worry is that we're going to be in a constant one almost by choice you know by your undoing i'm yes yeah. yes yes Sorry. quick question maybe it's i should have asked it for what exactly is i, I know what imax is i've been but what is what's really the difference it just, oh, the screen is bigger and a little rounded no so imax the screen is about 50 feet tall and okay, the okay. ratio is more square. I mean, traditional IMAX, not the IMAX that you go see that's just CinemaScope on steroids. I've literally okay. never been to an IMAX. So, but, I mean, honestly, it just looks like the screen is bigger. Yeah, it's I mean, bigger. But... And you, again, in an IMAX theater, you want to sit where you're like right in the middle of the screen. Same idea where you, to see the top and bottom, you just have to move your eyes a little bit. Because okay. it, the idea is that it overwhelms your perception. Okay, and... so do you guys have dome theaters? No, like Cinerama, like that thing in uh, like that thing in Las Vegas, planetarium, like a planetarium. Yes. planetarium. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, part of me thinks that that's just some kind of a IMAX that's like domed. I don't know. Isn't am mm -hmm. I wrong? Maybe. Well, I'm, I mean, traditionally, IMAX is seventy millimeter film flipped sideways, and it's three frames per frame. So, and it's also like three sixty, right? Like there's no. Well, no. I mean, IMAX is. 70 millimeter is basically an inch wide, and this is rough, by like three inches wide, like the frame. Um, and IMAX takes that and then turns it on its side. So you end up with like three inches by three inches of negative. So it's like an old Rolex camera. Like each slide of negative is like this big. So when I was in school and looking yeah. at the overhead projector. I'd like to set about one third of the way back. No, I'm just kidding. I know. Well, no, because I, I um, what I'm where I'm getting at is, have you? So we have this the, one of those dome theaters here. Yeah. This place called Exploration Place, and they all they have like, it's never anything like entertain like it's entertaining, but it's never like any f fictional movies. It's, it's always not a like narrative. Yeah. Right. It's always like about planets or about like the Earth or about like there was a tornado one that they had and um. Just all these like documentary type films that are on that dome theater, but it's pretty cool. Like if when it starts to like it, there was a, one I remember particularly about like the universe or whatever. Um, ha, mm -hmm. like when it would start to spin, and like all the star, like it, it was pretty cool. Like that, mm -hmm. that's probably the closest thing to a VR movie, because yeah, you really you are immersed in the whole. Immersed, yeah. The um, that's screen a great is word, all around too. you. Yeah, I guess immersion. I'm, I'm... I'm really wrapped up in the whole this is a this is a sign of things to come and and when you can be Luke Skywalker or you can be one of the other X-Wing guys 
and you're turning to the left and you see Luke waving high, you know, like, like a technology is moving so fast now and that AI is creating other AI. Wouldn't you do that in a regular theater? So let's say you got the, the screen in front of you, you could have a screen on the ceiling and a screen on each side and they could have different movies. So when you look up, it would be a different uh, video. But that's what I'm saying. Sky. We probably so it's basically like be, VR all around. It would be synced. But, yeah, it'd be but here's all the thing. Together. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like with that, that dome with the theater, techno. like it, it yeah, because it's basically the same thing except for it's kind of rounded off. Yep. But my thing is, is the more they get us immersed in it, like smells, tactile, haptic feedback, that kind of stuff, and we're doing all those things in separate arenas. A lot of it's in video games. We're very close to a point where, like, we're in our own movies. I want to be That's a gunfighter, and you know what I mean. And what it's is not? What is reality? Like, what are we trying to replicate, or are we creating a new reality? Well, are we, are we trying to here. replicate all of the it? above? Here, it's let all me. Of the above. Can you give me permission to share the screen? I'm going to show you this. Awaken your senses. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Share. And then make this sure you click. Porn, is it? No, it's not the porn. Okay. Make sure you click the sh allow sound or whatever it says. Uh, advanced sharing options. It doesn't say anything about sound, but give it a whirl. See, okay. it should be okay. Okay. Is it ready? Yeah. You should okay. be good. Okay. All right, can you guys see it? Yeah. 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 Uh, that letter's messed up. That's a bad sign. Is it not doing the sound? That's well, okay. I mean, yeah, we got no sound. sound uh... Okay, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it. Do I don't have an what? option for that. Oh, is this the uh, restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cause, well, I can't do anything about it because you have to have the sound. Like, you control the sound part. Yeah, but what's your volume, Des? Because the volume might not be on. I mean, it's all the way up. And I don't have any options for sound. I'm sorry. Okay. You do. It's That's okay. I think we can get the gist I'm not of that it. I'm seeing, but... Okay, well, you can. Do, you don't really need sound. Just, yeah, just imagine glasses. Just use your eyeballs. And... Yeah. Silver it's just background and... music anyway. Okay, so you feel like you're in the country of the food that you're eating. interesting that's it's not what cool. i envisioned when you described it but no that's kind of neat well, this is more of a commercial for what they're trying to yeah. get you to buy see oh, and like wow. part of me is like frightened of this but part of me is incredibly intrigued by it as well <clears throat> what the kind of, uh, I yeah i would do that know. I mean, it yeah. looks cool. I, I, yeah. Again, we didn't do it. One of those things you try it once. Yeah, I would. I would try that. Yeah, but what if it's the next Star Wars movie and you're fucking job of the hut and you're 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 <laughs> you're smelling the creature next to you? You know, like that's the part. <laughs> it doesn't. Techno AI is so frightening to me because I think we're already too far in the desert to go back. Like. It's yeah. it's advanced fast, and like I I uh, sent you guys a text earlier. I asked AI to write a story about how AI takes over the world, and it was like fucking six pages in like thirty seconds. Well, what did it say? Like, um, I haven't had a chance to read it. I just wanted to see what it did. Of of course, you've got to it, send it out. Yeah, why would you not read it? It's probably it's like this guy says, holding the secret to the world. Yeah. Well, I you guys you can add the link. I sent it to all of you guys on the oh. text. You can add the link to the uh to the um you know the show on YouTube. Um, but I mean it's moving that fast that now we're getting like full stories about something in like less than 30 seconds about a contrived story. I just was like, what is what would it be like if you took over the world? And boom, it's all like out there. Now, probably if we look through, we're going to find grammatical errors. We're going to find little things that are not perfect. But the fact that it can do that that fast, we're not far from like it producing smells when we're when we're watching something on like the next VR thing might have like something that goes over your nose so you can smell things. And maybe yeah. 
the little controllers you have have haptic feedback. It's not going to happen like what's haptic it's, feedback? Like um, it's touch. like vibrations when you grab yeah. something mm. like that. We, we're very close, and with the speed that technology is going now with AI and all, I don't think we're very far from like a suit or like I said, maybe the mask with the with the with that of covers course. the eye suddenly covers your nose. You know, and you're smelling steak. But is or, again, is this or inter- burning bodies or whatever? Is it storytelling? Is it entertainment or is it a compulsion? Oh, it's I definitely think it's a compulsion. little bit of storytelling mixed with um, what was the first one? Com- entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, compulsion. I just feel like we're. I think it's a compulsion. Well, well, wait a minute. I think. I mean, you could say that for some people, escapism. Zeus, hold on, Zeus. We can't open the, the story because it only. Gave me the chat GPT link. Didn't give me your story. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, I'll I'll text it to you guys. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. No, I was just trying yeah. to say that in some sense, entertainment itself, like the animals you talked about, it, it entertainment is a compulsion. Like it's we're naturally looking to be entertained and escape the harsh realities. Period. Now, for us, it's like, okay, I'm going to go to the movies and see a movie, or I'm going to play a video game for an hour. And the compulsion kicks in when you get addicted to the entertainment, right? I mean, that's when mm. it becomes a problem. And well, right now, they... it's a process that we go through for those things. No, we, but what I'm what I'm saying we... what I'm saying is that the entertainment is that simul stimulating. I mean, if yeah. we're talking about it's very dangerous because the compulsion is just going to get stronger and people are going to get hooked on this shit. That's, that's what I think is going. It's the modern day equivalent of, of cavemen sitting around a fire and painting on the wall, the dinosaur or whatever they killed that day or the harvest that they brought in. It's just amped up. It's it's on steroids. We've always been storytellers. No, I don't mean that. I mean, it's going to be so pleasurable. It's going to just, people are just going to do that all the, like they're going to get stoned and they're going to put on their goggles and I don't care what they're doing. That's what they're, they're going to be just doing that. In the reality, they're sitting in a chair Mm -hmm. or in their living room going like this or beaten off, whatever it is. Man, I don't think you could, you never realize how many times you can beat us. It gets real. That's true, but it, it just seems oh, like it's, it's just it just seems like it's dangerously it'll be dangerously compulsive. It's going to be addictive, and that's just what like people... I mean, literally video games. Yeah, they're addicted. They yeah, are. horribly. And that goes back to our episode last week with these things. Yes, yes. Because you start giving them to little kids, and then the technology comes out where it's all VR too, and they grow up with it, whereas we didn't. Yeah, they're never going to shut it off. They're never yeah, going to something addictive. And at the same time, they pump in the equity message. And those yeah. addic- you're really going to get brainwashed pretty yeah. easy. Pretty easily. That's the thing. It's it's like mainlining this stuff at this point. Yeah. yeah. Why does this feel like a, a prediction episode? <laughs> <laughs> just a touch base. Yeah. I mean, I, again, it's just it, it's not really it's less of a topic and more of just a thought experiment. I it. I don't know. Like I said, no. I feel like cinema has kind of, as an art form, has taken it on the chin. And I'm like, but there's there's all these other things that have kind of backfilled it, right? I mean, again, yeah. these Oculus glasses, all this other stuff. And I'm like, there's still this desire. It's just, it's, it's just changed. And, you know, when things change like that, that dramatically, I'm just interested in it. I'm like, yeah, where it is it going? Nuts. You know? Yeah. And how would we... How would we react if the next level in technology, we can do a podcast and our audience can be in the room sitting and looking to the left and seeing Jack, looking to the right and seeing Des, looking. um, That would not be good. It would be. But would we would we hop on that and be part of it? Hell, yeah. Oh man! I, I don't mean, look, look to see if I'm wearing. Any I don't pants. know because, like, mm, yeah, exactly, Tom. Well, part if I don't want I mean, pants. What if the room is dirty? I've thought about that. Like, There's so some socks over here. But... Mm-hmm. I gotta say, for an, for anyone that hasn't seen episode 170, I wasn't on it, but it was. Uh, and, and so I really listened to it closely. I watched it twice. It was I listened to it and I watched it, and it was amazing. 
And the thing about our podcast, our little Friends of Zeus podcast here, it really is a product of its time. I mean, we utilize Zoom. We are not one, not two. We're five people, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it's not just audio only. If you go on Spotify, if you go on other podcasts, you know, sites, it's, YouTube. it's just audio, YouTube. Mm -hmm. The way we talk, the way we explain things, there's a visual <laughs> element to it. So like yeah, when we were I listen about that earlier. Yeah. And I yeah. listen to our show sometimes uh in the car when I'm driving and you know, I laugh, I get there's things I notice, but there's it's watching it, the cinema side of it, it it's a whole different experience. There's facial expressions. There's episodes, old episodes that I've watched where I watch myself and then there's other episodes where I watch like Zeus or I watch Jack or Tom or Desiree like uh -huh. and and it's like it's like a whole different version I love right? when I'm watching I'm, like, and then like Zeus them. says something dumb like not dumb but like <laughs> probably shouldn't say um, maybe you know okay. yeah, not yeah. politically correct <laughs> and, <laughs> and Mike just goes <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part yeah. But I'm not ever trying to be like politically correct. I'm just I'm I'm honest. You know, I I, I don't like certain mm -hmm. things. I like certain things. Uh, but but I, I, saying, it's just funny to watch. But it is product, funny to watch. I'm, but, I'm with you, Desiree. But we're but like, with, with, with that our... last episode, Jack. I'm saying something about women, and I'm actually saying something complimentary. And like Jack's like, oh boy, here it comes. Here and I'm it like, comes. what I said was honest, and and I I had to backtrack a little, but uh, but. It was complimentary. That's but that's the beauty of this this show. We we but we're we're a product always popular. of our time. If you look at other podcasts, even ones that do a visual have a visual aspect, a lot of times they're in the same studio, they're in the same room. We started this during COVID. Like it, we're yeah. on Zoom. I mean our our canvas is Zoom. It's hilarious. Uh, we've mm -hmm. we had back cameras and horrible it's sort audio. of anachronistic. It is anachronistic. That we're we're kind of still on this platform, but it works. But if you could smell the burgers and fries, mm -hmm. and the slight mm -hmm. aroma of beer in the background, yeah, right. well, yeah. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack, Jack smoking. If you smelled the smoke, and it, <laughs> it's, listen. I mean, it, yeah, it. We want to like rage against the machine, but there's something very enticing about going into a world where your decisions aren't always bad and. And you can, you can yeah, it's very. Right I, I don't know that I'm not. I wouldn't mind that, but I, I'm, I'm coming from a much different place than you guys. You know, like I got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so Zeus is ready. Is Zeus is ready for the fucking Matrix. Just plug Fuck me yeah. in. Yeah, give me, me a in. fucking red pill, blue pill, whichever pill. Just make me smile a little more. You oh, know, it, it, it's a very enticing thing to to consider and you know you could advance you could go back in time you could be that that picture that i sent you guys me when i was like 18 like i wouldn't it be great to just go back and live your your mm. eight your teens and, and change things mm -hmm. because ai is working so fast that it can make that happen it's a fucking yeah i'll take the it's red like Red pill. It's like uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. If like Captain Picard just went to the hollow deck, and then never came out, and never came out, and yeah, it, like it, it would be a mess. It's terrible. It's a it's a scary episode if that happens. Um, but that's why I was that. But you you mentioned again holocan holograms just fucking. We skipped over that. We were like, no, they're so relevant. Yeah. yeah, but it's not. It's not gonna. Like I said, it's not gonna have the. The effect that when we were watching it at times, wow, would it be cool to have a hologram room that you could do da 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 da, all that stuff? But it, we just skipped that, and that was actually more like virtual reality. You know what I mean? Well, that's that's what it is. It's putting it's the goggles all the on. It's danger shit. Like you could make it okay if I get zapped, I feel the zap. Like there's a, it's interesting. I I, yeah. I find that little skip in technology, and I guess you guys aren't agreeing that there's a skip, but we we're not. Walking down the street, seeing hologram avatars walking down the street. We're, no, but if you sit at home and you, next level. if you put on the goggles, you're and you're in a VR world. It's like being on the holodeck. You just got to wear the hardware. That's all. It's the same thing. Right. That's what I'm saying. But that technology, hologram technology, never 
launch it, it is still location. around they do have hologram you can like get like um holograms of like a dead loved one and they can come back and like talk to you for the last time it's really helpful yeah. well is it creepy i don't know is it helpful for people that lost somebody very suddenly and never got closure maybe i don't know but they do have it i'm gonna and, i'm gonna and then i mean tupac he is a hologram so i mean he's still making appearances i'm gonna go off on a a little tangent here in so i obviously i talk about rogan all the time i listen to him a lot and yeah, you got a man crush on the guy of course man he's crush. a hunk he's a five man foot eight crush. hunk <laughs> <laughs> he's jack size and jacked <laughs> yeah but yeah, he's like five eight that's right yeah yeah but um but they, so there's this thing with like psychedelics when they do like dmt or ashwagandha that there's always like these these similar images that everybody sees. Yeah, the little like, green guys. No, it's more like like geometrical shapes, like a, you know, an infinity sign and like flowers and bright vivid lights, but they all like recognize it and they all when they when they're talking about it, they're 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 talking about if maybe not the same, at least similar. The the visages that they okay. see. Okay. And when we talk the whole, is it a simulation? I find that interesting. Like maybe that's a calling out to you could maybe be more than the other people that are following this 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 path. That like you have a vision of something that's really going on. Yeah, that's I don't know. Like did shock city? Isn't that like collective unconscious? Like maybe we all share some level of the same consciousness. Yeah, yeah, something? like mm. like a like a hive mind kind of thing. I, I find yeah. I just found it. I found it interesting. I just wanted to go up on that tangent. Like I've well, actually been considering like psychedelic. I, I I'd, I'd be interested in trying like maybe a ketamine treatment or one of those just to see what it's like. Jason, yeah, it'd be this, interesting. This is a show we should have. Jason has actually done the ketamine uh, therapy for anxiety. Uh, wait, we could wait, go into a whole thing about ketamine. Wait, time because... time out. Can we discuss the the? Uh, uh, does Jason want you to televise he's the fact that he's, 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 he's he has no shame in it. It works. It's got like a HIPAA Great. thing, though. I mean, him. well, we don't have to talk about no. Jason's, Jason's not like do have, but they do no, have. Ketamine is really valuable in a lot of different spectrums. Yeah. Like, there's like, at one dose it could do this. At one dose it could do that. At one dose it could provide this. At, at, mm. at another higher dose it can do this. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's we we get patients that um on on my unit that like. They didn't, they, they, they were so bad on, in the ER that like they had to give them ketamine to fucking slow them down and they come up and they're like leaving the next day because they, it fucking did it. It yeah. fucking knocked out But they also come out how whatever. they go in sometimes. So you got to watch um, out. Yeah. What you might call just before we get off, uh, cinema entirely. Um, you know, Mike, you were sort of positing the question, uh, you know, does does the art form in a sense die at, at you know, because of the like, are we are they just not going to try to make a good story and just focus on the reality that they can yeah, that's simulate? I just want to say, like, I know Scorsese shits all over the Marvel movies. Right. And they yeah. and the Marvel the Marvel movies, there have been some some just bad ones i mean especially yeah, lately, yeah. especially lately but as far as mastering the art of the cgi illusion and still delivering a good story i'm sorry but infinity war is just an excellent film i mean as like, is I, would, in -game. I would argue that infinity war not only do you get the the billion dollar cgi you know and all of the explosions and the the aliens and all of this it's actually a great story it's it's good storytelling like i think it's the amazing. feige the feige brothers nailed it they 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 had that they walked the fine line between art and story and and the tools and, and spectacle know, they, yeah yeah right so, i mean well, I, so and they're, 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 but their character building was so no that's what like, that's what i'm saying yeah. there there was a heartfelt story there as well and you cared about the character like, i mean and i'm i'm not just marvel boy here like marvel's yeah, no in yeah. fact Mar marvel's lost me since but i will at least credit where they where they made magic i mean those movies like, are just how really amazing nice. was the last like 15 minutes of endgame like Captain America gets the the hammer and Thor's like, I knew it, I knew it. Like just you you really were happy 
yeah. along with them. And then like Avengers Assemble and all the fucking bad guys, yeah, all, it's... The, all the heroes. It yeah. was like riveting. Both of those movies, I think, are two of Yeah, but it's like a it's like everything's a bell curve. Like at some point you, you done told all the stories. Right. I think they got another I... one. I think they got another series in them. They're bringing in X-Men. This Deadpool movie looks fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah no, I mean they I'm just I just I, you know, Martin Scorsese could could talk shit about everybody else's movies. Yeah. And, and 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 he's putting out these four hour epic movie i mean like you know hey marty With pesci to, and de niro again yeah it, but it's like he used to know how to edit his films down to a digestible amount of length <laughs> that's of gone time, yeah and now he doesn't know how to do again, that it's a bell curve so he was and, really like, also, like prime, and now it's i saw the irishman and it was good it's I good i wouldn't say it was nearly his best movie no good fellas good fellas i still hold strong is maybe my favorite movie by him yeah, it's a great movie. Hands and, down. Yeah. Better and than the, the Godfather, the, better than anything else. Well, I, and also I think before we before we sign off tonight, since we're since I'm sitting here taking Martin Scorsese to task, <laughs> I also have to take Robert De Niro to task. Oh, that's yeah. big. Okay, because showing up at Trump's trial and trying to be important weak. relevant and try, yeah i mean it was so bad Such weak sauce it was so bad he's like you know this guy this guy this is what he this is what we're doing i mean yeah, it he was, was just being terrible. a character it was he, was being, he was being jimmy jimmy hoffa or whatever it was yeah. it was so contrived it, it was it, embarrassing like i yeah, felt embarrassed really for him it, and it really you know it was yeah, that sometimes well, he's, gotta... he's like what 82 83 he's fucking old he's 80? getting a little longer 80. i think he's like 80 yeah, still yeah. having babies yeah. though. Not your best cognitive mm-hmm. age. <laughs> no, like well, he's younger. He's man. younger than he's younger than Biden. So, so, so back to cinema real fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> I'm not. Uh, so I I don't think the the I agree, Jack. Like the combination of the two, like you could have like the coolest special effects, but if the story sucks, like, because sometimes I mean, so, sometimes the stories you're just like, this is. No, I know it's not real, but you could. This would could never occur. Even the way that they're sh- they're they're trying to make it seem like a kid, like that. Those the sequence of events doesn't even like. Right. So I'm I'm kind of thinking like, okay, you know the movie Twister. Baby, I mean, oh god, <laughs> smack. <laughs> there's only I mean, and then Twisters is coming out. So there's, which is going to be interesting to watch. I mean, I think the CGI and Twisters was, or Twister was pretty good. I mean tornado for the time but yeah. the time, i mean so it's going to be interesting to see what are they going to look even faker like faker but like real if that makes any sense i mean they're going to appeal to our senses whatever their pr- test group but it's like it okay the story behind a tornado a tornado happens it destroys shit we study it like there how many more ways can you yeah how many story? trailer parks do you really need in a movie I, I mean, so it's the tornado be is a metaphor they... for the relationship yeah. between the. Yeah. So it's like I said, it's going to be do. interesting if they can make the make the story. Because you know how sometimes well, sequels get. You know what's interesting is like, and and then maybe we should wrap it up. But mm. the interesting thing is, there's like movies from our youth. Like uh, one that comes to mind is Never Ending Story. Shitty special effects. No way, man. Come Not on. at the time. They're, they're kind of shitty. Not at the time. The love on Falcor. Anyway, t- anyway, my well, okay. By today's standards, they're shitty. Tread effects. lightly, my friend. But yeah. but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hit a soft spot. Um, but if it's on, I'm fucking watching it. Um, Princess Bride, mm-hmm. another movie. If it's on, I'm at least stop. What's that? Terrible, terrible effects in that one. Terrible effects, but. The story was so captivating. And it really, both of those movies really didn't make a lot of sense. They were just a hodgepodge of different different uh heart strings being pulled. Like with the with the horse dying. Oh my god. First time I saw that, I cried. Oh so sad. Right. Um there is the interesting part about the practical movies, the ones that don't rely on those things that that still has an appeal to some to some of us. I, I love a good, like, like I said, never ending story, man. I watch that movie a hundred times at least. 
because it just if there's good storytelling the audience yeah. will forgive yeah you know, exactly. yes. special effects or what they'll yeah. they'll kind of let it go if the story is good enough i mean well and you know you guys have been talking a lot of star wars star wars is just and so is dune and i hope they someday do foundation isaac asimov because that's what both of those come from basically um they use joseph campbell thought processes you you start off meek you go away, you come back supernatural. These are all things that we can relate to because of religion. You know, Jesus mm. was here, then he did this, and he comes back, and blah, 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 superpowers. You know? But there's something in, yeah, finger guns all over the place. Pew, pew, but, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Super Jesus. Um, but there is something in our nature that we like those stories where 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 you get to be meek. And then you come out and maybe that's part of like why we will probably fall prey to AI because we can now become that meek guy. And then we go off in a VR world and we do some little adventures that they put into our brains and we come back and now we're like, you know what I mean? There, there's a lot to this that again, it's very appealing and, and, but maybe that's in the design. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it totally is. And it, like I said, it goes back to what we talked about last week. I mean, if now, if these younger generations are getting access to all the things that we're concerned about at a younger age, there's no doubt that by the time they're our age, they're immersed completely. Yeah, in like, shit. like they don't start start off in the baby pool. They go right to the deep like, end. I mean, we're already like, talking. That's where they're going to start. And we're already talking about fertility rates dropping and uh, population replacement dropping. I yeah. mean, I mean, people are finding it harder to find a mate and create families and afford property. I mean, you add this shit to that world and just keep giving it to kids. Yeah, the world is over. But but that it's, and I, I, you're kind of saying this, but it, but to put it in different words, it's like the thing about that is. We are probably the last great, and I'm a big Gen X guy, you know that, but we're probably the last group that like, that drank water from a fucking hose. You know what I mean? We, the millennials, we did that. We did that too. It's okay. So, but we also played outside and like, you know, ate weird shit in the yard. It wasn't just us. Yeah. But, but the the point is, is these, these kids are going to start in the deep end. No like paradigm shift into this, this brave new world. It's just going to be, that's how they always knew life. Like yeah. we knew life where dad would say, go hold this aluminum foil, touch the antenna, and we can watch the rest of the Ali fight. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah, no, that's all. Does that that's work? All. What's that? Does that really work? Oh, yeah. Is that how yeah. you get HBO? Yeah. Absolutely. This is the generation Desiree, before didn't at one have point TV. In time, at yeah, they didn't have TV. They just had radio. I mean, yeah. we grew up, we were like in it deep with TV. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't right. There was a time the where you actually had to go up to the TV and yeah, turn this little I dial on it. That. Yeah, I yes, know. Jack, I, I do think one. we've been on long enough. No. Okay. Hold on. Wait, before everyone oh, leaves, yeah. I want to show you. Do you guys like Crocs? No. I, don't I mean, know. I like I them on other the people. kids wear them. I like them. I, I like You know them. what? I've never tried them. So okay, okay, now, why? I would like to show you guys my new Crocs. My Lisa Frank Crocs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Those are wow. cool. You got those little buttons and they stuff. They are on. definitely not in the Matrix. <laughs> I don't know. What, I what's on there? Some. What is that supposed to be? The Lisa Frank Crocs. Look how obnoxious the, the design is. I'm just having to, Oh, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa Frank. But you I had a big look fight with my 12-year-old tonight. She wanted to wear Crocs to her like concert at school where she's yeah, playing. Why not? And, and what kind like, of concert no, is it? Not wearing those on stage. We're, yeah, we're such a lazy to... society. We want shoes that you don't even have to like put on. You just put your foot in them, walk out. Well, they yeah, wear pajamas at school all the time now. Black ones. <laughs> anyway, I think they're cool. I think they're cool too. Oh, Jack. Okay, I think we've been on for a while officially. It's time to wrap things up. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Go get Lisa Croc Franks. Bye. Or, Check. Ah, Lisa. Check. <laughs> <laughs>
It's all, it's going to be different. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um, tonight, tonight's show is going to be Sorry, never watch it. He hosted by funny. our good friend. Ah. Mike. Uh, he's got an inner, I found it a very fascinating, uh, video, the, the video that you said, I, I didn't feel like it matched up with the wiki page as much as I, I absolutely not. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it was, doesn't. It's very, very interesting. Okay. Um. Anyway, right. go ahead, Mike. I, Mike. Yeah. Michael. No, that's cool. Well, listen, I I've been off for two weeks, and I am chomping. I'm chomping at the bit to get back on the uh, the podcast here, man. I'm telling you, I it's when we first started this thing, it was uh because I wanted I, I felt like I needed to get stuff off my chest, and so like the last two weeks, I mean, what was it? My uh. It was a birthday, and then last week I was sick. I felt like crap. Anyway, happy to be back. Really happy to be back. There's all kinds yeah, of crazy back, stuff. Man. Yeah, thanks. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Um, you know, a couple things I wanted to just quickly uh, touch on. I Real quick, just current event type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to look back at uh, our early episodes where we talked about COVID, uh, and if you're watching anything going on in Congress these days, and you see like how the CDC and the NIH and Fauci and Burks, they had no, they had zero scientific evidence to deal with social distancing, masks, all that. They stuff. made it up. They, they made, made it up. up. And we have a we have someone that's been on this show before that was telling us uh, in the at the time that they would not allow people into their business or go into a business where people didn't have to wear masks and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And I just want to remind everyone how insane it was during that time when people were, um, you know, really uh, being assholes to each other. And, yeah, militant. Militant, and it was all bullshit. And the Friends of Zeus podcast were we were way ahead of the curve. We called it bullshit right out of the gate. So that's I one said thing. from go, man. It can't four be, years ago. Four it, it just took four years for the whole world to catch up with the Friends of Zeus podcast. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted right. to stick it in, in the eye and I <laughs> didn't want it to go by without uh notating that we were correct. Mm -hmm. Uh because I, you have to. I just want to say that I was I was fine with what the masks just say. I know I got you, but this this is this was someone that was saying that um, people should lose their jobs and things along those lines, and it was based on nothing. You couldn't go into a restaurant. Listen, I did. I'm not talking about I in a hospital. To. I'm talking about like at a McDonald's. Well, no, wait a minute, Mike. But there were also people out there in the media that blatantly said that people who didn't get the vaccine, for example shouldn't get medical treatment at hospitals Correct. jimmy kimmel said that on television yeah you know, he's like oh sorry you don't i used get to, to come like in. that guy too what so, a piece of shit i'm just saying we no, need to remember this. And yeah and i'm not i'm not trying to peel the scab off but i'm just trying to peel the scab off a little bit well you know have you guys noticed uh, probably you haven't desiree because of just where you where you are in the world but have you guys noticed a ramping up of the masks again lately yes no 100 yeah. percent like it was gone. It was like literally gone. Look, and I'm noticing I get it, dude. If you want to wear a mask because you don't want to get sick, I get it. Whatever. And now, Maybe it helps. But I'm just saying they had no the point is they had no scientific evidence and it has now come out that they just were winging it. They were hmm. just making it so up. So you guys yeah, are I, bigger into the under oath. Side of under things. oath, they have admitted this. Wait. They were winging and, it. Well, hold what? on. I, I want to make a I want to ask a question. You guys are bigger into the Republican side of things. I'm just like fragmented. No, I'm not. I just listen to the, the thoughts that are going on. Am I, should I be liking Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Greene? Because I feel like I kind of like know, her. man. I don't like politicians. Just like. But results. I like how she fucking tore into Fauci. Don't get into personalities. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I, she's like, sounds like really intelligent. And other times she's just off. The oh, board. she went off. Af they they mm -hmm. did like an interview after this thing, and she's like, yeah, that, "That was a good fucking interview. bullshit." She was like hardcore. Sometimes she's like on that. point, and she's great, but she needs uh, to do that more often. Other she, times, yeah. She's yeah just she did sound kind of Karenish, which was what what bothered me about it. Is yeah, it's I'm with Tom. I'm with Tom when she's when she when she nails it, she's good. But most of the time, she's a little off a of rocker. Was she like... was she part of that whole? Um, 
AOC, oh yeah. baby girl. Yes. That, yeah. Wow. Baby. See, I liked baby her there girl. too. She was like, fuck you. I'm not apologizing. I like somebody that says, no, this is what I said. I'm gonna stick to it. Even if they're wrong. If they if they're using it, if they're basing it in what they feel is like, you know, fact mm -hmm. and they're passionate. I'm fine with that. It's yeah, but she just, she was she was she was catty too. Like Desiree was yeah, talking that was a about, very stupid. Like incident. Desiree was talking about the apex vagina or whatever that you know. <laughs> that's vagina. that's what that whole scene was like. One of them makes fun of the other one's eyelashes, then the other one makes fun of the other oh, one's butch fun, body body or something. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was like yeah. What was what was what was the was it the Nineteenth Amendment that gave women the right to vote or yeah, women's suffrage that's about right. That's yeah, the yeah, only yeah. one I'm against. Yeah. But it, <laughs> All right. It, it, so, okay. I just want to bring it back because I unleashed the demon from the bottle wait here. Minute, wait yeah. a minute. But Mike, Mike, if you're going to, there's there's another major current event that we're not going to talk about tonight that the happened this be a show. week. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to say when we did our prediction for 2024 episode, one of mine was that uh, former President Donald Trump would probably get himself locked up by the end of the year in some form it might yeah. be an ankle bracelet it might be house arrest we got to wait until july to find out but we're getting there we're getting there officially yeah. 30, and i will say was, any well anyone that's saying like there's no way that's going to happen i'm like come on man i mean there it's like at some point you got to wake up there a hundred percent 100 percent chance they're going to try right. to lock this guy up no they're going to anything that yeah. this judge did that was by the norm. Like every decision he made was like contrary to what would normally be done. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what this is going to be too. He let the let's, prosecution let's... go last uh, and and made the defense go first with the closing arguments. I know this is crazy, but I'm going to get us back on track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do it. Okay. I, I just look. I, the only reason I want to and thank you for indulging me is just I've been off, so I've been like I've been like chewing on trees and stuff, you know. Anyway, so tonight your bear. What we thought about that stuff. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, that's Tom. For, yeah. Tom, would you say I'm I sorry? One, I have one comment about the mass thing. Maybe it's a question. So maybe those people that are I don't know how the uptick has occurred and where y'all live because it ain't happening here, but. Um, what if those people wearing the mask are the sick ones? Well, yeah, they should keep yeah. it to themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today I was at CVS and this Sorry, dude I mean, had, he comes in and gets his results for COVID, touching everything. Like, I mean, I don't believe it's a death sentence to get it. Far from it. I don't really care. It's not but about I don't COVID. Get it's it. about keep your fucking germs to yourself. I don't need, no. I don't mm. need a cold. Well, I, I don't need you... the flu. I don't need COVID. I don't need a fucking yeah. up, upper respiratory infection. I don't need pneumonia. That's not contagious, but I don't Why need would you the go to the cough. CBS I don't need the smoker's cough. I don't need none of that shit. Keep Why it would you go to yourself. a place that is trafficked mm. by many people that are often sick because they're at the pharmacy to get your fucking COVID results? Well, I mean, I'm no, not a big no. COVID's the end of the world guy, but... But there's also pragmatic thinking. You don't go to a fucking place where people are often sick. That's why they're guys. At the guys, we're going to end up having to make Mike edit stuff out if we don't get. Back <laughs> no, no. And I, but I just want to say one thing for because I appreciate where Des is coming from. My whole thing is that 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 needs to be remembered for the future for anyone watching this. Our next episode probably is that what what the real damage done was the trust Absolutely. that the common people have in our government because mm -hmm. now we know they just fucking pulled it out of their ass and and the well what do you is, expect i mean it was something that no one ever expect, saw before so what do you are they them, supposed to have all this scientific data on no, record I they could go look say, up in the last time covid came around i mean you i can't. expect them to say they don't know i yeah. expect them to have and theories advice. But the problem is, in my opinion, Desiree, is next time, because this will happen again, and heaven forbid, it is really lethal. I mean, what if it years. targets children? What if, Now, when they come out again, they have lost the credibility. Credibil they have lost yeah. the credibility. And, yeah. and that is what they just wasted that. They just pissed it away. Yeah. Or, or it was exactly gone. what they wanted to do. Which that's the to me. Right. That's the dangerous thing mm -hmm. is that they they 
they they it was a social experiment they wasted it they wasted the moral authority and, yeah, and now and, it, they're never gonna yeah get but it it's not gonna matter because it's not gonna happen again for another 150 years so no one I will hope, remember this i hope, to, no, I hope. Manufacture well, i'm another. getting letters from my kid's yeah. school that somebody got chicken pox chicken pox is nothing to kids well and now, for parents could be bad and also like tom just said you know, Des says it may not happen for another. If they if they manufactured this one, why can't they do it again? That's the why problem. Ha why do you think they haven't already? Well, I'm just saying, like the idea that it's not going to happen again. It I'm doesn't not. Doesn't even have to be a serious pandemic. I mean, this no, was, it doesn't. This just wasn't enough. even that bad. It wasn't that just dangerous, enough. really. But it then was, also, it also was the dangerous. Bigger... It just wasn't as dangerous as no, they, they see for every person it. who got it. And also the result. bigger, but the bigger picture too, like Mike's saying, if we have no, if if we're, if we're losing all of our cultural common beliefs, and if now we have no faith in the institutions, who do we trust? Then no, then there's no social cohesion at all after a right. while. Like, that's the problem. Is that what they want? Yeah, that's, the that's the issue. They want. So, so, Mike, that, all right, so, so that brings us to French cinema in the 50s. Thank you. And, um, Good night. <laughs> so,